Good evening, everybody. Uh, Nick Rains here from Leica Camera Australia. Good to see a lot of familiar faces popping up in the chat here. So welcome to our launch evening. Um, this is a big deal, really. Uh, this is the launch in Australia of the rather amazing new Leica M11, which I know has been hotly anticipated for rather a long time. Now, no doubt, most of you will know all about the technical specifications camera. It's obviously been, was released you know, a short while ago. And this is our own version of that launch. And we're here really to listen to a user's perspective on the whole thing. But um, what I wanted to do was just go through a few of the, let's say the what I consider the most important parts of the camera. Uh, just briefly, I'm not going to bog down in technical discussions this evening. Um, the most important thing is that we're gonna be talking uh, in a very short while to uh, Australian artist and storyteller Stephen Dupont, who will be joining us in a sec. Um, there are also, I should point out, some of the Leica Camera Australia staff taking part this evening in the chat. I've seen Ryan Williams, our managing director, in there as well, making some comments. So if you have questions about that, uh, prices, cameras, whatever, purchasing particularly, um, please put those in the questions. Uh, sorry, the chat would be the best place for it on the screen there. Um, if you have any questions for, uh, for Stephen, particularly. Um, we will be very happy to answer those. He's very happy for people to uh, type in questions and we'll try and get to them as he's talking. So feel free to do that. The chat is the best place for this because it is being monitored. There is a facility at the bottom of the screen called Ask a Question, but that's a little harder for me to see. So let's try not to use that. So let me just flick to my presentation for a moment. Um, let me just share this screen. And where are we? There we go that on the screen there and hopefully you can see our a legendary invented slide there now the reason that we've called it this, this is the title is because well for obvious reasons the m system camera has been in pretty much the same shape and state as a, as a leader in its industry for well, I can't quite do the math, but since 1954, essentially, with the M3. So I'm going to just make a point about that in a second, then we'll get to the technical stuff. So um, let me just get that going. Um, Legend reinvented. It's not the same camera. It might look like the same camera, but there are an endless list of new refinements within the camera. Um, 1,100 single parts, most of made in Germany. Um, a lot of those new parts are brand new, designed specifically for this camera. So whilst you have the very familiar form factor, you have a completely new camera inside, and particularly the sensor, which we'll come to in a sec. And obviously it's the same German handcrafted excellent that we're all used to and that we all love. So there's no compromises being made there at all. Handmade in the German in the factory in Wetzlar, like all of the M system cameras have been for a long time. This is the camera and you may think, well, OK, this looks very, very familiar. There's very, very little to tell the difference between this and, say, an M10. If you look carefully, you'll notice there's a little button on the to the right of or in, as you look at it now to the left of the lens release button. There used to be a, a button there for magnifying the view, but that's been moved to the top. Uh, we'll come to that in a little bit, a little bit later on. But the idea is that this familiar camera hasn't really changed for a long time. The same oval shape from the top precisely the same. It's almost exactly the same thickness as the previous camera and the same brake lines in the design with the, the base plate, which has been changed, the brake line above the lens, and then obviously the proportions of that top silver or black section uh, with where the rangefinder windows is, where the rangefinder window is, um, and of course the Leica logo. So it's, it should look very familiar. When you pick one up, you'll be absolutely right at home. Let me just show you how it's changed over the years. So it's 12 iterations of the camera, and you can see they overlay really nicely on each other. I think this is quite a neat little graphic, actually. We, we like showing this to people. So there's the M10 and then the M11 at the end. So very, very similar. As Rus uh, To quote Russell Shakespeare, a uh, good friend, he said it's like picking up an old, uh, sorry, it's like picking up a new old friend, which I thought was a really nice way of putting things. So Anybody who's got an M10 or an M9 or any of the M cameras will feel totally at home with this camera. Thing is, the sensor. This, this to me, is, is the big deal. It's 
60 megapixels. And I'll, I've got a, a picture in a sec, which I hope will explain what that really means. But there are, is some new technology in this. And, and I'm, I must stress, this is a completely new sensor, specifically made for Leica. Uh, it's not just a sensor off the shelf. It's completely custom built for this camera. It has what's called backside in <laughs> I can't even say it. Backside illumination C CMOS sensor. And that, if you look at the two little graphics on the right there, means that instead of the photo diodes being below the wiring, which you know it sounds a bit counterintuitive, it's being put above the wiring. So it's a much gets a lot more light through. It's just a superior product. For some reason, when CMOS sensors were originally made, it was easier to make them that way around with the wiring on top of the photodiodes, a lot like your eye, in fact, where the nerves actually run between the retina and the light coming in. And there has a, a lot of calculation has to be done to reassemble the image from that. This makes it a lot more efficient, and that leads to certain image quality benefits, which we'll get to in a sec. For instance, you've got <clears throat> three different resolutions available to you, and this means it's kind of three cameras in one. You've got 60 megapixels maximum resolution, shoots a little bit slower. You don't have quite the buffer or the buffer will fill up a lot quicker, obviously, but it has the maximum resolution possible. Then you've got your medium DNG setting, which is 36 megapixels, it shoots a little bit quicker and the buffer fills up, or will fill up with more images. And then you've got the small DNG at 18 megapixels, which you can shoot continuously, with your finger held down without the buffer ever filling up. So it's a little bit like a very high performance camera on one, one hand, as in shooting continuously, four and a half frames a second, bang, 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 keep going. And then you've got the, the studio camera, if you like, or the, the tripod based camera for landscapes, maximum resolution. So you've got these three choices. Personally, I shoot everything at 60 megapixels. That's the way I work. Um, you do have a slight benefit with the lower resolutions uh, with dynamic range. It's one stop extra. I'll mention that in a sec. So you've got the choice of how this camera works for you and your needs. When you go to the lower resolutions, there's this technology called pixel binning comes into effect. And it essentially takes a certain number of pixels or photo sites and averages them into one. So in this particular example, in the top left hand corner, those four blue photo sites will become one bigger photo site. And any variation between those four photo sites, which is essentially noise, random noise in the system, will be averaged out to one value. And this means that your the random noise in all electronic systems gets minimized and you get a slight gain of dynamic range and you get a definite gain in low noise at higher ISO. And it's definitely visible. So that, that's when you use the lower resolutions as well. Okay. Then you've got 50,000 ISO at the top end, which is pretty high. And I've shot this camera right the way up to 50,000, and it's completely usable at 50,000. You maybe you wouldn't want to do a one meter wide print because you will see the noise, but for publications and so on, 50,000 is genuinely usable. There's also this thing called dual pixel gain, which I'm not totally familiar with how it works exactly but essentially if you think about previous sensors as you step up the iso the dynamic range drops commensurately so if you go from 100 to 200 your dynamic range will drop by one stop with dual pixel gain the first i think from 100 or from 200 to 400 to 800 you get that but then it resets itself at 800 back to the, the full 14 stops or 15 stops dynamic range and then steps down from there. So it's like a little boost and it gives you better dynamic range at higher ISO. That's the essential part of it. OK, um, there's also a base ISO of 64, which uh, is it's a nice sort of uh, number to use. It harkens back to the old days of Kodachrome 64, which was one of my favorite films. So the, these changes have really picked up the image quality of the M system camera. So at a glance, You've got this um, BSI technology, you've got your three resolutions, you've got base ISO, 64, uh, 64 ISO with your 15 stops of dynamic range, uh, dual pixel gain. There's new color filter technology on the front of the sensor, and that's essentially an incredibly fine, th thin piece of glass, which uh, acts as a bit of a cutting filter, and it has to be super, super thin, so it works well with the M lens technology being very close to the actual sensor itself. 
and there's a new image engine in there to process these monster files as quickly as possible. So there's an enormous amount of new stuff built into this camera. Now, again, I'm not going to go through all the improvements because there's over 40 improvements uh, listed, but I've just picked out a few of them which I just want to mention. Okay. First one, this is what 60 megapixels looks like. This is me in my studio printing wide format prints, and that is a 40 inch wide print uninterpolated from the M11. So that's a 240 pixels per inch, and I, I, I'd love to be able to put it into your hands and show you. And in fact, we will be able to do that because these prints are going to be sent to the stores so that you can see with your own eyes exactly what 60 megapixels looks like. And it's impressive. The, the guy with the surfboard there, you can see individual hairs on his head in that print. And that's a 40 inch print. So it's, I'm hugely impressed. <laughs> it's amazing. So here's the improvements. Low battery, a large battery. You get about 60% more life out of the battery, which is really useful. The battery is a little bit like the batteries in the Q2 and the SL2 in that they click in through the base plate. Uh, there's no actual base plate removal required. The battery and the lens compartment, the battery and the SD card compartment are combined. And when you take the battery out, you get access to the SD card slot as well. So that's a nice improvement. You can also charge the camera through a USB slot in the bottom. So if you are out for a long day shooting, you can put your camera back in your bag, plug in like one of those um, power bank batteries into the base of it and give it a top up as you're going. Obviously, you can carry multiple batteries as well, but that might just save the day. You never know. This one's an interesting one. I don't know whether any of you use Live View very much, particularly handheld, uh, but certainly when you're looking for the viewfinder, when you magnify the view to get that um, uh, critical focus, you'll probably notice that it magnifies the view, but it also magnifies the shake so that the image can be a little bit shivery because you're trying to hold it still, but it's magnified quite a lot. This image is now stabilized in software so that what you see through the viewfinder is no longer as wobbly. And it makes a big difference to handheld work because you can focus critically and not, and it's just easier. It's a really nice idea. I've not seen it done um, on many cameras. It's, it's new, new to me. I'm very impressed when I saw it. Next thing is long exposure noise reduction as an option, not as a mandatory thing. The idea is that when you do very long exposures, the camera will then take a second exposure for the same length of time to cancel out any noise from the first exposure, which, and it works, it's great, it's a great idea. But if you don't want to do that because you want to shoot quickly, in previous iterations of various cameras, uh, that's not been possible to turn it off. So if you do a five minute exposure, You've got to wait five minutes, but now you can, in fact, turn that off just like you can in the SL2. So that's a really nice move. Okay. And then you've got dual memory in the sense that you've got one memory card slot, but you've got 64 gigabytes of memory built into the camera permanently, which effectively acts like a second SD card. So I don't know. I have I will put my hand up and admit that I have in the past gone out without any cards in my camera. And yes, it's a silly thing to do. You can't do that with this camera. So something to bear in mind. It's a nice little touch. All right. So that's just that's the basics of the M11. The 60 megapixel image is, is the big deal. And it is very, very impressive. But what we want to do really is speak to Mr. Stephen Dupont, who has been using this camera for, well, it would have to be best part of six months now. Um, he's a Leica shooter for many years. I believe he got his first M3 in 1986 from memory, um, inspired by the likes of Robert Frank and Kappa and uh, W. Eugene Smith, people like that, moved into documentary work and has been shooting with Leica cameras ever since. Um, his work has been published in, well, you name a major magazine in the world, and I guarantee that his work will have been published in that Time magazine, you know, Sunday Times, Color magazine, Geo magazine, you name it, his work's been in that. And he's been in many exhibitions in major cities in the world. So he is a very, very accomplished photographer. And so his opinion on a camera like this will be very, very welcome. And that's really what we're here for this evening. So I'm just gonna bring Stephen onto the stage here and hopefully if I click the right little icons here, we should be able to see him. I'm just gonna Get rid of my little uh, slideshow for a minute and say, hi, Stephen. How are you? Hey, Nick. Yeah, thanks hey. for having me. Good to you. see you. <laughs> it's great Welcome. to be here. 
Yeah, well, well, welcome to one of our online launches. It would be so much more fun, I suppose, if we could be in person down in Melbourne or in Sydney, but that's the things that we have to put up with these days. So where we'll, we'll do our best this evening. Yeah. So just the first thing I want to ask you, and I think probably the, the, the most important question of all is, is can you give us a broad impression of working with the M11 particularly? <laughs> I can. <laughs> um, so, well, look, I've actually got it here, so I better show it. I think it'd be Brilliant. rude. Yes, yes. It'd be rude not to. So, um, uh, this is this is the wonderful M11, everyone. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to like kind of turn it around. Um, there you go. Oh, I wish I had one here to do the same thing with, but yeah, unfortunately, people yeah. no, it's, them. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and um, it's got a 50 mil Apo lens on it, which is amazing as well. Uh, I'm going to first start out by saying, um, honestly, if uh, if I could medically have this camera attached to my hand, I, I think I'd do it. You know, I think, I think I'd actually have it done. Um, it, it just, it feels beautiful. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm biased because I have been shooting Leicas my whole life. Um, and that's one of the great things about having a Leica and shooting on a Leica is, is the, uh, the comfort is, it's, it's the feeling that you get when you hold it, you know? Um, and so holding this is for me, like holding my first M3, mm -hmm. um, it has the, exactly the same connection. Um, and, and, and that, like you explained, Nick, you know, Leica, it was great seeing that slideshow from, you know, cool, designs. It? it literally has not changed, really. Um, and that, and and why change something that is so superior? You know, really. So you may as well keep it. You know, um, keep it similar. And you know, I think, you know, predominantly with this particular camera, um, apart from it feeling great in in your hand. I mean, for me. Um, I mean, I, I, I've kind of got to rewind a little bit to my philosophy about photography and why I love shooting with Leicas. And, and so I've come from obviously a, a film analog um, training, you know, with M3 and M6s and an M4P and so forth. Um, and, you know, this feels like I'm going back to shooting film again. And film has always been my great love. That's why I became a photographer. You know, I learned on film and, you know, obviously digital wasn't invented then, but um, I've, you know, I've struggled with moving into the digital world because mm. I've yet to find the medium uh, in, 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 in my comfort zone and, and also the quality and the way I like to shoot. Um, it's taken a long time. And so for Leica to bring out this camera, for me, it's like, it's just quite mind blowing. And, and mm. you know, so for me, it is like shooting film. So mm -hmm. I shoot it's like I'm shooting film. Um, mm -hmm. I I love that it's purely manual focus. I, I'm I'm really, you know, I can't I can't begin to say. I mean, I went through a stage when I started using some autofocus things, and you become quite lazy. And you know, whenever I got to shoot my Leicas in film, I would be like, "Wow, this is this is why I became a photographer." And so having this brings me back to the very core. Of my love for photography and so you know the challenge is there you know you you're challenged to make photographs because you need to work you need to work hard you need to focus you need to do your light readings you you know everything is becoming manual again and um and it's wonderful so in terms of the feeling and the way i shoot it, it offers everything that I love about photography. It allows me to be really mobile. Um, I have to say, and I, you know, I'll, um, I'll show this as well. So, you Come know, on, I've got the M10 here, which oh, yeah. I started with, and it's a beautiful camera, of course, but the difference is the weight. This is lighter. It and, is lighter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I think I think for me personally, I think it's an improvement. I'm getting okay. old, and you know, I you know, I, I kind of want to. When I shoot, I like to hold. This is how I shoot. I, I, I'm generally walking around holding the camera rather than sort of having it around my neck and things. Oh, okay. So for me to move and be mobile, having a slightly lighter camera is really great. Um, yeah. You mentioned the uh, 
because I'm just going to go through the functionality of yeah, the sure. camera to start with. You, so you mentioned the us. battery. The Absolutely, battery yeah. is. Yeah, show us that because it's gonna, just like you sell too. So you, there's a little lever and you yep. just pop it and press it and it just pops out. <laughs> well done. So That's that nice. me, I'm look, I know there have been a few complaints aficionados out there about the traditional Leica with a plate. I don't think mm. it really matters, to be honest. I mean, I love the plate too, but I have to say you've still got the plate look, but having yeah, that benefit of the pop-out battery is really great. And then, of course, in here you've got your um, SD card, you know, which yeah. pop out as yeah. well. Yeah. The battery life is incredible. I mean, I've yeah, been, I was going to ask you about that. I incredible, mean, incredible. incredible. And I can tell you because I... I've been comparing it to the M10R. Mm -hmm. It's it's you you said it was sixty four percent more. It's it's it's. Yep. I, I would agree with that. I would say yep. that there's 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 a genuine difference in mm -hmm. the amount I can shoot on this. Um, mm -hmm. So I found that really great because um, when I'm out in the field and I'm working all day, I'm shooting all day. I want mm -hmm. that battery to last, and you know I don't want to have to go and recharge yeah, again awesome. and so forth. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's a great thing. And I've shot all day. I've shot, I don't know, maybe, what is it, you know, 12, let's say 1,200 photos or something like that. Really? And the, wow. Yeah, and the battery is still going. And that's wow. on the highest yeah, um, yeah. sensor range, the highest megapixel yeah. range of 60 megapixels. So I'm, and like you, Nick, I'm, 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 I don't shoot anything but. So I'm shooting, yeah. I'm shooting the, the highest quality I possibly can. Um, and I, that, that, that slight slowness doesn't really bother me because yeah. again, it's about, you know, slowing down in a fact, you know, yeah. you know, slowing down and looking and waiting for the moment, you don't need to rush, you know, making mm. great photographs is not about rushing. It's, it's waiting for the moment to come in front of you. And, 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 Absolutely. you know, that, that range and that, 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 that program is, is perfect for this. And, uh, you know, I don't Brilliant. I don't shoot on motor drive. So for me, it's really about capturing the ultimate quality um, and, and really having, you know, having that sort of that that quality of, um, yep. you know, of, of uh, yeah. high of the high megapixel. So that that's been yeah. great. So, okay. you know, we'll, I mean, I could some images. Raving Sorry, go on. ahead. No, no, I could keep raving on. But no, no, shoot me a question. <laughs> please yeah. <laughs> i was just going to say we we um we'll get to some images in a sec but i wanted to know what your impression of also because you mentioned you're shooting on 60 megapixels the whole time yeah i know we've we've um, got your images either already in the stores or soon to be in the stores for the next exhibition what's your impression when you've been working on these files and looking at them in detail on yeah. on the, the crispness because i have my own opinions on that but i'd love yeah. to hear yours well i mean <laughs> It, it 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 varies in, in terms of depending what the aperture you're shooting on. I mean, I've been playing around with different apertures. It mm. seems that the most crisp is is falling between about f8 and f11 on mm -hmm. on certainly on the 50 mil. So mm. I'm talking about the Apo 50 mil here. Um, that seems to be the greatest crisp range that I've found, um, which is which is good. Good to know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, I mean, look, it's it's what I love is I love, you know, I mean, the quality is always there. I mean, you know, if you focus sharp, you mm -hmm. know, you know, you're, it's yeah. up to you. You know, you've got to focus. So if you can focus sharp, it's going to give you an incredible sharp. sharpness. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I, and I've, you know, and I've blown it up and, and seen um, and we'll see in one of the images of mine mm -hmm. in the exhibition where. You know, there's an arm poking out of the smoke, and and that arm is just pin sharp. Um, we'll see that picture in a sec. And, yes. and so, yes. and that was shot on the fifty. So you know, mm -hmm. I think, but but you know, beyond that, I t what I really love is the color palette. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I think this camera really really provides a beautiful tonal range. It's a really you know when you get your aperture right and you you know you get your light readings right and everything and you it really gives you even in sort of strange lighting situations mm. it, it it really holds and and um in 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 dark in dark situations yeah. um there's yeah. a photograph i shot in almost pitch black of a guy with a tattoo in the back of his head and and, oh, yeah. and and just the detail i mean every crack in his head you know every <laughs> wrinkle 
is is yeah. coming out i mean it's it yeah no it's it's really you know and i'm personally i'm not a stickler for for detail in that regard i'm, I'm more about the emotion i'm more about mm -hmm. the feeling of the image i mean i'll go for a blurry image anytime over a sharp image um oh. you know i mean I, I will go for the feeling of an image and that's how i work um but you know there's no denying the, the technical brilliance of this camera there's no denying it it is mm -hmm. it, you know it's it's incredible yeah <laughs> Tell us what you really think, Stephen. I'm so pleased that you said that. No, I mean, no, I'm not. Look, I'm really, not it, it, it is impressive. It is impressive. You know, <laughs> I'm. I'm not the salesperson. Believe me, I'm. I'm just. No, I know you're not. <laughs> I, I'm the. I, I'm the operator. I, I'm. Yep. I'm the artist. So yep. I'm giving you a, an honest yep. uh, impression. Mm. I've had this camera for six months. I've been using it regularly. Um, I. It's. Well, one, it's never broken down, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. you know, nice. you know, never had any technical issues. I never had any, any, you know, sort of computerized issues, Th you know, basic things like that. And because I'm using a prototype and yeah. they're still kind of working things, that's a really yeah. great yeah. thing. So, yeah. you know, I mean, Ryan at Leica was always telling me, oh, this, you know, and you as well, like they're updating the software all the time. So mm -hmm. if anything happens, don't worry. But to be honest, nothing, nothing really, you know, there's nothing really to report in terms of um, any malfunction. Um, you know, I mean, and it, it just, you know, there's no overheating. There's, and I'm, I'm like, yeah. I'm really, I'm putting it through the ringers, you know, I'm really yeah. pushing it. Um, mm -hmm. I covered this uh, Summonats uh, event down in Canberra, which was crazy. And yeah. it was we'll uh, you know, a full day of, of, of shooting. And, and it was wonderful to kind of just kind of explore what this mm. camera can do um okay. i mean i primarily shoot on two lenses i shoot on a mm -hmm. 35 yep. and a 50 you know they're yep. the two main lenses that i love to shoot with and so um you know but you know really it's it it you know it is for me it's it's the feeling of the connection with my hand mm. and that i can i can i can i can be mobile i can move mm. And, you know, the wonderful thing, and, you know, I think a lot of you people out there listening to or looking at this tonight, I'm sure you're a lot of you are Leica shooters already, so you'll understand where I'm coming from in that, you know, when you look through the viewfinder of a Leica, you, you see differently. You, you mm. It shoots differently and, and because you see differently. And mm. so you're seeing what's coming into frame and no other, you know, well, all rangefinders do that, but no other camera besides a rangefinder will give you that wonderful ability to keep your eye on the prism, to not move your eye away, and to see the, you know, see what's coming into frame. So then you mm. can then you can be ready to take the photograph that you want to take. That for me was why I fell in love with this camera from the from when I was nineteen. Mm. Having that ability to see things coming into frame without having to kind of take your camera away from your eye that 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 for me was like this is taking you to a whole other level of photography mm. um and and <laughs> it's my favorite way it's my favorite way of shooting you know i mean you you preempted my question i was going to ask yeah. you to explain the whole rangefinder experience but you've just segued into that beautifully and yeah. i think that's because yeah. some people won't be familiar with rangefinders and just to yeah, give you well, you know, view that they, they, there's a bright line in the viewfinder, and right. for using a 50 millimeter lens, you can still see a 28 millimeter field of view. And what right. Stephen's saying is, you can see things that aren't in frame yet, yeah, which you right. can't in a normal camera because it's blocked out. And it's a big deal when you're doing reportage oh. work. It's it's a huge deal, you know, when you're doing street photography or documentary photography or anything like that, where you're really aiming to capture the as Katia Bresson, you know. Um, said the decisive moment you know you're yeah. really looking for that moment and 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 that moment that only you see no one else yeah. sees that's you and and yeah. so you know for me it it is it's that having that prism and then it could be just you know because i'm always looking for details within the composition so mm -hmm. i'm looking for a hand to kind of come into frame mm -hmm. which you'll see coming from outside and then coming into your frame you know any sort of little kind of nuances or kind of strange shapes or moments or a face a hand mm. whatever and i'm going to see that you 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 can almost preempt it because you can yeah. see it coming and then you're ready and then you can capture the moment i mean it's yeah. 
the wonderful thing you can't do that in an slr camera you know you can't you don't have that you don't have that that wonderful um you know, isn't it? Yeah. it you know it's a it's a beautiful guide and you know it's um you know yeah it, it yeah i mean so that's the prism is wonderful and you know does allow you to kind of capture you know those those beautiful moments um okay we should probably show some photographs that you've been shooting actually so i'm just going to click yep. over to your screen share again and come back to let me just get the right button here and we'll go back to the screen share here that should be your portrait again and then so i know you've been shooting with the camera we picked two sets of bill you picked two sets of pictures to show us um the first ones um well you 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 tell us about the pictures i'm going to leave it entirely up to you yeah so it's it's sort of like an ongoing project and extension mm -hmm. of you know work that i've been sort of covering that i i guess concerns our environment and um um, the series has been called, or is, is called Are We Dead Yet? But I mean, this is sort of a separate kind of body of work that, I, that I've been working on. But um, what we're looking at here is uh, it's a photograph of a, well, it's a service station um, that's um, down uh, near Kuma in New South Wales. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, the, you know, the technical, I'm glad you put the technical details in. Thanks, Nick. That, that helps yep. a lot because, I mean, you know, I'm never going to remember all these kind of like things. Um, like I said, I really, when I'm working, I'm I'm very much kind of working on the on the fly, and I'm I'm I work very quickly and 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 tend not to dig too much into what what I'm doing aperture wise and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, so yeah, so you know, this is um this this is yeah, well, photograph. You know, again, these are just some of the selected photographs that I liked from from this okay. ongoing project. Tell me when to move on, because I'll just click the button. So I actually go um, to the next one. Yeah, I mean, you know, you 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 could move on. I mean, I don't think I need to kind of analyze anything. It really is okay. just look right. at the photograph and you know, yeah, um, Love take it one. in. I'm I'm really I'm really interested in 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 um, people's questions. I have to be honest. I mean, I really yes, please. I um, would love to. There are some comments yeah, well, here. I'm gonna start to engage with everyone i mean i'd really love to sort of you know answer as many questions as i can um, sure these uh, people do do fire in some questions so we'll we'll keep on discussing yeah. these images this, I, is, I, this one struck me as well as being rather i, I want to see that this one as a big print i can't wait yeah well you know obviously there's there's incredible detail in this you know I mean, you really see every little crack of paint and um i thought it was a, a, a you know a good example to show off um to show off the, the, the this camera and what it can do i mean it's yeah as you can see I, well it, it it's a car door basically an old yeah. car door yeah um but i just love the texture of it and the the kind of color palette and everything like that when i'm shooting i'm always i'm always really concerned with color palette i have to say mm -hmm. i'm in a very you know i mean if i'm shooting color you know i really dig deep into the tone and the color palette and how it kind of balances against mm. The project I'm doing as well that's really important to me uh, and that will be a combination of what you're seeing and, and this is an obvious situation where there's this incredible door which has got you know multiple layers of paint yeah. over the years that are cracking off and so forth um, and then but you also got to shoot it in the right light you know I mean this is this is on a, an overcast day so you know this wouldn't work in harsh sunlight for example you know you would miss so much so it's important to go for the right lighting conditions and you know i'm just going to have to just butt in a set because yeah, somebody yeah. just pointed out that our thumbnails are hiding the the name of the lens i didn't think of that when i set the vector things no. up so sorry about that but Look, i can tell you now that it's either a, it's either the 50 mil or the 35 mil simulax and i think you can see the other the, the shutter speed and the iso and so on so sorry no, i do apologize for that i a, can't move those thumbnails it's not sorry possible. guys it's a 30 it's a 35 mil like you know yeah, like, yeah it's a 30 and also mil. it says like an m11 there too so i do apologize for that that's entirely my fault so uh, <laughs> oh dear there's always something isn't there yeah. all right so the, the, again coming back to the your, your palette this is a different palette but still interesting contrast to blue and, and blue and amber color tones yeah again it's sort of taken from one of the old cars you know in a, in, a, in a wrecking yard and and just sort of uh you know again capturing that kind of contrast and 
balance of, of different color palettes and so forth. I'm just, um, I'm not ignoring you, but I'm, I'm going to, should I, I, I want to start looking at some of these questions as we're sure, sure. Kind of for it. going yeah. through. Does that Go make sense? Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to see who has, so I don't, you know, I don't want to sort of miss people. Um, so it was just to clarify, was it the yeah. Apo Summicron or the Summilux, the 50 millimeter lens that you've used? Because it said Summilux in the metadata. Yeah. Which is interesting. It's but not, somebody's I'm, acting a bit with the Apo. That's wrong. It's actually the Sumicron. It's that's a 50 millimeter. Is, okay, Sumicron. that's interesting. I wonder what, that yeah. may be a glitch in the older firmware with identifying the lenses and the, the coating. So I've yeah. taken that from there. So so it's the Apo Summicron to be clear. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thanks for yeah. pointing yeah. that out. Yeah, I just yeah. took the metadata out of the images and plonked it on there. So um I guess that would be so, enough. Just so you know i'm not lying you can you can there you can, it is all right all right i'm not hiding anything no, no, we believe you we believe you all right um um so uh, i'm i'm just gonna you know look at if it, uh, i'm just trying to work out these questions or are people just making comments um well it's a bit of both really okay. so um uh, the yeah. uh i think we're okay oh there's one there's a lesson a, a question yes, of a little back from quok saying shooting with 60 megapixels is is any movement going to show up this is actually a very interesting question about high res sensors and hand holding what 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 are your feelings on that is, is this the question f16 do you see diffraction or is this something uh, else? not no, it's, it's one from quok um oh, it's about uh, 10 comments back if you can see that um there is one about diffraction we'll get to in a yeah, sec. Okay. Sorry, let's go. That that one. One. So he says, shooting with a 60 megapixel on the street, any movement is going to show up, especially without any stabilization. Um, to be fair, it could be the reason behind the Apo 50 comment. Um, so I just, I guess the question is, with such a high resolution sensor, do you find that camera shake becomes a problem because of that high resolution or does it, does it not come into play? To be honest, it doesn't come into play. I mean, I, I have not, I have not um, sort of experienced anything like that in, 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 in that it's sort of affected, you know, what I'm, what, what I'm getting yeah. back, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I certainly have not seen any kind of camera shake um, mm. personally. No, no. I mean, there was, there was one image we were looking at which looked like it could have had a little bit of stabilization shake, but it, it wasn't enough to, and it was so minute. Um, I can't yeah. remember the image, but my printer, who's a, a master printer, Warren Macris, he, he, you know, he spotted it. I mean, I wouldn't have spotted it, but he did. And it was like, this is kind of interesting. There's a slight kind of, you know, mm. sort of shake here, but it was on on the on the real kind of like detail you wouldn't see almost human eye. Yeah. 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 So yeah. yes, to yeah. answer yeah. that yeah. question, I'm sure you're going to come across some of that, but it's it's not anything that's going to, I think, di di distract or detract from the, the overall quality of what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because and then there's this. There's a question about diffraction. Do you see diffraction yeah. at 16? Now, I don't. I'll, I'm. I'm going to sound like an idiot, but what what does diffraction mean exactly? Okay. Oh, is, is, it's to do with light going through small that, holes and spreading slightly and softening the image, and it does tend to come into play with the higher resolution sensors in theory. So, um, if, if you're happy, I'll, I'll answer the question. No. Um, if that's oh, okay. Well, I, no, no, I mean, if we, I think, so if we go back to that uh, the other image, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, so am I correct by saying the diffraction is on the edges of the, the frame that it gets a little bit soft? No, no, it would be in the micro detail. You would okay. lose, in theory, yeah. you would lose resolution, in theory, when you yeah. go past about F8, F11 on, a, yeah. on a, a resolution, without going into too much of the physics. It's a physics yeah. thing. It's not a lens thing or yeah. anything. It's purely yeah, yeah. physics. Um, so the, the, the reason I wanted just to, to, to mention it uh, or, or to go in a bit more detail with the question is because it's, it's a true thing, but it's surprising how little it shows up considering mm. how much it should show up. Because I've been shooting this with the same gear you've got. I've got. I, I was shooting with the Apo, the 35 mil Apo actually, and I yep. was shooting at f16, and I was expecting to see it to be visibly softer, and yep. 
it's actually not, which yeah. I find quite astonishing. The theory would say it should look softer, but the reality of a print, and I'm talking out a big print, is it actually doesn't seem to show up. And now I don't actually have a reason for that. It's mm. just what I see with my own eyes. And you, you seem to have seen the same thing. It's yeah. surprising. It could be a contrast thing with the lenses. Um, mm. I honestly, I'm not sure, but it's a, it's an important question and I'm, we're just not seeing it, which is, which is surprising. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know for it, for an example, I mean, this photograph we're looking at now, um, mm. when the printer and I, Warren and I were looking at this in detail, um, you know, toward the edges of the image, it does get a little bit softer, which mm. I personally like. I don't, I don't for many reasons. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, but it's, you've got it, the field issues potentially. If yeah. the, you know, if it's perfectly square to it, that you know, it's not really an issue at all. The apo yeah. doesn't really have edge softness at all for flat subjects. Mm. You know, it, it, people test lenses against you know uh, yeah. things with like real world subjects, and they're three dimensional. So you know, yeah. it, it doesn't have that at all. Well, that's right. But I mean, if I'd shot this at say f eight, f eleven, then it mm -hmm. would have been then that wouldn't have been a problem you know it's more about the aperture you end up trying to yeah you, know, you end yeah. up using anyway but yeah okay all right i just want to address one other question that did crop up which we we did answer but i want to just go into a little bit more detail just because it's something that i see a lot on forums is to do with the high resolution sensor and hand holding it and the idea is that it a high resolution sensor can be self-defeating because you can't hand hold it stable enough it's simply not true no that's not true yeah. Yeah. Not true. You only need to use one shutter speed higher than you would normally do. And yeah. it completely cancels out any possibility of camera shake. So really don't worry about it. It's yeah. not a problem. And if, and if you do have camera shake, you'll probably have a better picture anyway. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we've got one um, coming up. So can I move on to pictures? If, yeah, dare yeah. I? Dare yeah. I? Okay. Let me just get oh, to of course. the next no, no, Absolutely. I, I'm going to. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep looking at some of the photos. And I've, okay. I'm just looking at some of the other questions here. Um, Oh God, there's a there's a question. So there's a question from Russell Shakespeare, mm. <laughs> our fellow, uh, my my good yes. friend and uh, our fellow colleague, Leica, Leica ambassador. So he's saying, uh, I am really enjoying this tonight. Big question for Steve is, when do we plan for India again? Well, yes, we must go. <laughs> Definitely, we must go. We must go. In fact, maybe uh, maybe we can have a quiet chat to Leica and do a Leica project over mm -hmm. there. That would yeah. be cool. now Can't Russell we... and I have traveled India a lot together and uh we we both have a love for India and I would lo love nothing more than to go back there with him again. Absolutely. So yes, Russell, we'll plan it, mate. We'll plan it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna step through the pictures a bit more because we're gonna yeah, of get course. No, no, the, uh, the redhead ones I'm as happy well. To just sort of show them and if anyone's got specific questions on the images, please fire a question to me or there's a, there's a question from ron waters there with the huge amount of tonal range would monochrome files from the m11 be as good as the m10 monochrome Ooh, that's a tricky one um i'll, I'll step in and, and try yeah, and answer, answer that one yeah. and the answer is i honestly don't know i haven't had a chance to test it yet um they are different animals that work in different ways i would be surprised if they were worlds apart but I, I can't honestly tell you a definitive answer to that. The M10 monochrome version is astonishing. It works in a different way, as I'm sure you know. So the difference between as it's 40 megapixels, isn't it, and 60, isn't as much as you might think. So I suspect that you'll still be getting the... I, I, I suspect that the M11 won't be like a huge step above the M10 monochrome in terms of sheer sharpness but again it would be subtle and i and i haven't actually tested it so that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> so that's a difficult one all right let me just move on to another picture i want to i want to show the um yeah, there we go some of these other here talking about camera movement or low shutter speed this was at an eighth of a second so this is a little different yeah, I love yeah. This. So, this is awesome. yeah so obviously yeah this is so this is handheld and um you know, what, what, I'll, I'll just kind of give a little background to how this, hmm. and I was kind of experimenting. So I have to be honest, I took quite a lot of photographs of this scene um, because we're looking at a car that's not moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's stationary, of course. Yeah. And um, um, But what had happened was there was a, a, a major gust of wind, almost like a, a pre-storm kind of wind 
kind of coming through, um, which created this incredible movement of all the foliage, you know, all the all the kind of grass that was kind of surrounding this car. And as I was looking at the scene, I thought this is really there's something really beautiful and poetic about this. And I wanted to kind of experiment with the low shutter speed on this camera to see what I could kind of create. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in this moment, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a low shutter speed an eighth of a second. Um, and I'm really, I'm not moving. I'm, I'm, although sometimes I do move a little bit, mm -hmm. to create a little bit more movement. So, but I'm not exactly sure of this frame, but I'm kind of working and moving and, and kind of staying and, and then, you know, becoming stationary and just allowing the kind of movement of the, the foliage to kind of, kind of, you know, create this sort of wonderful effect of this blurry kind of moving effect. And so, cool. yeah. And in the end, I kind of wanted it to be almost like the car was alive, you know, it sort of had this feeling of this, 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 this dead car had sort of come alive, become alive again. So I was, Sort of experimenting and trying to create this feeling of that and um and i could start seeing and of course you know we get to see on the back of the camera what's going on if we want to have a look at it and so i was starting to sort of see oh this is interesting and i i just kept playing with it until i felt like i kind of got the right the right moment of of the right foliage in the right place no, and, you know. this is going to look great on the on the wall i think i don't know if you can see on behind me on my wall here there we go there's there's that image is there right. so uh, it's going to look fantastic as a, as a big print so uh, this is uh, i love i love this image i've seen a few other people saying the same thing okay now you mentioned this picture earlier so let's get on to some of these rev head pictures because yeah. this is one that you did mention earlier on oh yeah so whereabouts is this that's in canberra so that's mm -hmm. during summer nats which is their mm -hmm. big rev head kind of annual sort of festival um you know where people come with all their their Fords and Holdens and all their other cars and sort of, you know, basically do um, sort of um, car burnouts and, um, you know, sort of drag racing and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, it's fun. Um, and, you know, you, you obviously pull in a lot of car cultured people. And uh, so for me, it was, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm more of a people shooter than, than anything else. I mean, um, although we've just spent the last 10 minutes looking at photos <laughs> yes. that have nothing to do with people. But again, that's a challenge for me because, uh, you know, I'm kind of interested in looking at different things and, but, but generally I'm, a, I'm, I'm sort of more known for photographing street life. And, and so this is a moment where, you know, I've come across this guy who, uh, in fact, I saw he had, um, this incredible nice. tattoo, uh, on the back of his head and, um, you know, I, I, I pretty much had to, you know, I asked his permission, could I photograph him? I said, I, I don't want to photograph your face. I just want to <laughs> photograph the back of your head, you know. So, um, yeah, so anyway, and he's sort of standing in front of this old Pontiac or something like that. Um, yes, that's awesome. So, yeah, and it was, it was really late, you know. It was like, um, I don't know, it was like 8.30 at night or something. It was pretty dark, so it's almost no light there, you know. Mm. So it, it really picked up. You know, and what I'm on, I'm only on sixteen hundred, you know, ISO, but I'm on a really low aperture. So, um, yeah, I think it, it handled it really beautifully. One other thing I should probably point out is, due to the way that the M system cameras work, the aperture isn't necessarily precisely the one that you chose because it makes a best guess using a little yeah. external light meter because there's no direct mechanical linkage between the camera and the lens for the aperture. So right. that might have been 2.8. It, it, it would be impossible to tell after the fact. You know what? I'm glad you brought that up because I would never shoot on 3.4 ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, so. have been, it would have been F2 or 2.8. Yeah, no. No, I think that, that, that's how the camera works. Um, and it's, there's a little, there is a little sensor on the front of the camera which does a very sort of rough light meter and it, and it, it the camera knows this ISO, this shutter speed, therefore it must have been that aperture, which of course isn't necessarily the case. So it's it's just useful for wow. later. It's not That's... strictly correct. It's clever, isn't it? <laughs> it well, it's 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 scary as what it is. <laughs> it's it's machines taking over the world. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right. Great. So here's some of your buddies. Oh gosh. yeah, yeah. And these are just some some rev heads. Um <laughs> That I, that I photographed and um yeah i mean it's all sort of part of that kind of that car culture um mm. 
mm. that we have in Australia. And uh, yeah, there's a question come up from Richard Smith. Do the, do you use live view for these summer nuts shots on the back of the camera, or are you using the rangefinder most of the no, time? No, I'm glad you asked that, Richard. I I never use the live view. I, okay. So for me, the live view doesn't come into any of my photography. Um, it's, I'm just not. I'm, it's not the way I shoot. I shoot through mm. prism, and I shoot like I'm shooting a film camera. So um, I don't know. I mean, I've looked at the live view. I've, 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 you know, played with it. It's just not how I shoot. Um, I, I'm, I was never. Yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable with it personally. So, um, but it does look amazing, and and I've, I've looked at it like, you know, it's all, for me when I see live view, I almost want to do video or something like that. But I mean. <laughs> um yeah it, it's it's yeah but i mean it does look super cool um it's just not how i shoot yeah well there's a couple of things first of all if you're not using the visor flex holding a camera in front of you is not a very stable position anyway and no. you've got to put your spectacles on to focus on it so using the range finder is going to always be better in that sense but when you've got the visor flex on um Personally, I use the visor flex quite a lot, but then I'm not shooting right. people as much as you do. So it's, yeah. it's all, you've got the option to use it or not, depending on your shooting style. And, That's um, right. And you know what? It does come down to that. So if you like the live view, use the live view. I mean, it's, yeah. it comes down yeah. to a personal preference. I mean, I, I tend to like, I, you know, when I, when I shoot with the camera, I'm holding the camera and I'm actually using, I'm, I, I tend to be quite, you know, I tend to squeeze the camera into my eye socket, which is not yeah, always a good yeah, thing, but yeah. I tend to use my eye socket as a balance. Okay, um, yeah. And yeah. and my nose, you know, I okay. and it's just the way I've always shot. And 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 I think I've always been able to I think I can safely say I I'm a pretty good handheld shooter because I've always been able to shoot on really low shutter speeds mm -hmm. without a tripod, you know, like I'll go down to a one second, you know. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, a quarter oh, of a gosh. second. You know, I will, I will attempt to do it. It doesn't always work, but it will sometimes. <laughs> and I like the challenge. I like, I like being able to, to be able to control that low shutter speed and breathe, mm -hmm. and hold mm -hmm. it, and try mm -hmm. and maintain the balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah, know, yeah. it, okay. you know, again, it's all hit and miss sometimes, but it, it does work <laughs> for me anyway. Yeah, give it a go. <laughs> Question from Paul: Do you wear glasses, or is there a diopter built into the uh, rangefinder uh, viewfinder? No, I, look, I don't wear glasses. Um, <laughs> only when I'm reading or looking at a computer. Um, right. So no, when I'm out shooting, I have great like long vision, and um, it's only if, like if I have to edit my work and or if I have to look at the back of the screen, and I want to check focus or detail, then I'll stick my glasses on because yep. I won't be able to see it properly. So it's yep. it's a reading you know kind of screen thing yeah i should point out that when you're looking through a rangefinder viewfinder you're actually looking straight through it you're exactly. not looking at green like a dslr or something like that so right. it's actually less critical for your for your eyesight in that sense yeah. you're not having to focus closely it's quite different yeah oh, yeah yeah no it's yeah it's great okay there we go bit of bit of action here so the rev heads in biz i love those big sombreros they're very cool Oh yeah, yeah. No, so this is at the summer nats as well. And um yeah. you know, again, it's one of those situations, you know, where I'm kind of standing in the group of people and I I like to immerse myself in the scene, you know, to mm. to almost become a part of it, but but not disturb it, you know. So there's mm. there's a fine line in photography um when you're working as a as a documentary photographer mm. where you are in the frame or in the scene um but you're out of it and so and what i mean by that is you you need to sort of find this sort of way of immersing yourself within the scene around you so i'm kind of very close to this girl on the left and i'm almost touching the guy to my right mm -hmm. and and i'm 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 placing myself in a situation where i'm part of the, mm -hmm. the scenario except I'm not infiltrating it and I'm not affecting it, you know? And so then you're waiting for this moment. So just through, and I'm also using them as a framing. So I'm kind of mm. framing between mm. this girl and the beer can and the guy's shirt. And, but, but my focus and I, my, my punctum, you know, is, is right there in the middle. It's right where that girl is just, yep. you know, in, in another world. 
and she's Absolutely. yeah she's, she's yeah. really she you know and i'm tr and i'm shooting you know maybe 20 frames to get this you know i'm, I'm shooting various images of this this emotion that's unfolding in front of me um but it's really important to be there not to stand because i'm not using a long lens and yes. nor would i want to because you would no. get a very different photograph so yeah. with a 35 mil lens you need to be in there you need to be close yeah and and, yeah. and i like to be sometimes i'm you know almost on top of people but mm. i'm trying to be respectful and i'm trying to kind of be away but i'm trying to also be in so it's also that game as well it's also that kind of moving in and out challenging how far you can go yeah before you disturb mm. Mm. the uh the scene you know yeah. um, i know and i would never this, want to, yeah this next picture is similar this, this one i'd like to explain i, I have difficulty passing this picture uh, this big shadow in the front it's it's kind of dynamic but it's also hard to interpret so i'd love to hear your thoughts on this one yeah so i mean you know it's again it's like a classic kind of street f photograph mm. in a sense i mean i was i saw um you know the the wonderful shapes uh well wonderful shape of this 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 you know this young young woman here um that i was kind of focusing on in 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 the crowd scenario but then you know as people are walking past my camera i'm also aware and again this is the rangefinder you know people coming into frame and waiting and in this scenario i was i could see that there was going to be a really dark kind of you know because mm. the light was only hitting a particular place so mm. i was kind of getting these interesting shadow effects of of figures and um and of course you know I saw the back of the guy's shirt, which yeah. said blow, blow hot. And I just thought, no, nah, that's that's the frame, you know. So yeah. um and and I have to say, you know, this is and I'm being brutally honest, you know, as because I'm an editor as well. I edit all my own photographs and um this is not a perfect photograph. Um and 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 nor would I want it to be. I mean, I'm I'm always looking for imperfections in, in images. I think I've sort of in 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 the lifetime of taking photography in the in the 30 years i've been taking photography i've kind of grown to appreciate the wonderful imperfection that photography mm -hmm. brings us and i think that's also that is this wonderful connection with the leica camera too that allows me to work in a way that brings right. in these kind of um very kind of fluid moments and mm. And, you know, so many people strive for perfection and I think photography should be the other way. I mean, I think your beautiful, most beautiful, strongest moments are going to be the accidents and, and the, <laughs> the imperfect moments and, and these wonderful things that kind of happen when you least expect them. And, and sort of this is a kind of one of those moments where, you know, yeah, it could have been a little bit this or a little bit that, but, you know, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I kind of achieved what I was, was trying to get and I was really happy with the result. So um, I think, you know, it brings in a much more of an emotion, much more yeah. of a feeling. You yeah. feel something if you see something that's not perfect because exactly. we're not perfect as human beings. As humanity, we're imperfect. And so our photographs should reflect how we feel as, as people and how we feel in reality. And the world is a very imperfect place. And so wow. why not right. let our photography kind yeah. of express the truth of of the imperfection of life okay well there's a profound thought for the evening <laughs> Love yeah. that. that's, that's really interesting I'm actually off on my philosophical no, no, it's all good it's all good yeah it all comes with the territory so going to somewhat more simpler picture to understand this is just it amuses me immensely it actually reminds me of one of jesse marlowe's pictures as well is that there is one of his um, well-known yeah. pictures that's actually got a somebody carrying a big yellow piece of wood but um and this is very cool it's funny you say that because I, I i was having that moment when i saw it i thought oh this looks like a <laughs> jesse moment you know and i love and i love jesse's photographs yeah. Yeah. amazing yeah. photographer and I, I it was going through my my mind when i saw the yellow you know bonnet and i thought wow yeah and it just had that sort of contrast and uh but again you know anyone who is has their eyes open yeah. and see something like this it 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 needs to be photographed and so um yes. and, but for me it 
was the whole combination of everything that worked you know yeah. obviously the guy in the middle with a with this kind of yellow bonnet and then what i love is the guy in the far left pointing kind of walking away and pointing down so you know there are all these wonderful compositional yeah. moments that you know that need to come together to kind of bring it all into into the frame and you know to make it work you know yeah um, well, that's your decisive moment, isn't it? It's well, just everything yeah, there. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a decisive moment, but I mean, it's a moment. And, and I, I really, um, you know, there were a few photographs from this scenario. It was very quick, so I didn't have much time. You know, it was like literally the guy walked past and if I didn't get it, I didn't get it. So but I was happy with this frame. And, and of course, you got the smoke kind of in the background. Yes, it adds it makes to the, yeah, it adds to the kind of ambience of the place that you're in, you know. I got one question, which I think uh, yeah. I'm I often get from um, people who are looking at these sorts of images is when you are confronted with something that's so quickly moving, are you anticipating the focusing or are you focusing in reaction to what you see? Which way round is it? Are you like guessing first and shooting or yeah. are you reacting? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I work both ways. Um, <laughs> I, well, but I predominantly work where I'm focusing as the movement's happening. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I will focus and I will I will focus as I'm moving with the subject oh, okay. as well. Or, you know, I will kind of like focus and move and focus a little bit and move and shoot and shoot and focus mm -hmm. and shoot. So I'm focusing and moving and and or the subject's moving and I'm focusing. Um, that's generally how I'll react to and so so this for example um, and that that also comes from you know I mean 30 years of hand focusing something with a Leica you get pretty quick at it you know um, yeah. and I have to say that this this is you know very fluid and and yeah. you know um, you, you become really really quick at focusing um, yeah. and so and I love that challenge so I, yeah. I you know that's part of that's part of uh, the creativity, you know. Um, and I then should, I should the point other... out to the listeners that that's a very difficult thing to do. And that, as Stephen said, that's 30 years of experience coming into play there. Focusing any camera like this and reacting to quickly moving situations is just difficult. So, yeah, well, more strength to you there, Stephen. That's astonishing. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you, sorry, just to answer the second, oh, yeah. the second bit of that question, mm -hmm. I will... Sorry. If I have time and I'm I'm not seeing a moment, so if I'm mm -hmm. kind of sitting down having a coffee or a beer or but I I'll always have my camera there, I'll kind of get my camera and I'll kind of put it on, you know, around three meters. Okay. And I'll put it on like eleven or F sixteen mm -hmm. and I'll just leave it there. Okay. And if something happens so quick mm -hmm. that I I literally don't have time to kind of you know and i don't want to I, I don't want to miss the moment i'll just i'll just shoot it that's and hope good and hope it gets. because yeah. Yeah. there's that confidence in if something's within that kind of range of about you know three meters or mm -hmm. you know three meters to infinity kind of range it's 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 kind of you know you, you're going to get something it could be something good mm -hmm. something not mm -hmm. but and and sometimes I'll even have fun with that where I'll be walking down the street and I'll pre-focus and I'll just go bang, 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 you know, like bang in people's faces or, you know, like <laughs> I, I, I'll kind of not even look what I'm shooting at. I'll, I'll just use, like I won't use my eye anymore and everything's pre-focused and I'll just mm -hmm. see what happens, see what I get, you know I mean? Because, you know, it's not about being bored or anything. It's about just doing something new. And, and in fact, you know what, it's about having fun, you know, and at, the <laughs> yes. end of the, at the end of the day, if mm -hmm. I can't have fun with photography, then I, I may as well not shoot pictures because it really is for me about enjoying it. And I think you need to play. It, it needs to be a playful yeah. thing sometimes. So experimenting like that, you know, and again, comes back to that, you know, wonderful kind of imperfect kind of thing. You, you can end up with something really wonderful. You can end up with something really crap. Yeah, no, yeah. that's that's good, that's good photography advice. Actually, have fun. Really, really. Sorry, do. go on. Yeah. Yeah. That's 
No, 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 no. It's, I, those sorts of things are gems, I reckon, yeah. because people can take it very seriously and they get bogged down in precisely what aperture, precisely what should have no, At the end of the day, it's about the image that you get and what you see in well, front of you. Well, it is. And, and, you know, I mean, as much as this is, you know, just the most amazing camera, which it is, it does come back down to you as the photographer or the artist or the image maker. It's, it's how you feel and how you react and, you know, um, you know, it, but, but this camera will, if you're comfortable with this style of camera, this camera will give you everything, will allow you to produce the work, mm. but you have to do the hard work. You have to mm. have the imagination. Mm. Mm. I've got well, actually one before we talk about this picture. I've just got one question for you. With the sixty megapixel sensor, there is a facility in the camera which uh, uh, to to do like a digital zoom. You can actually change the angle of view, and it's it's essentially a crop. Is that anything you would ever use, or are you working specifically with that full frame, yeah. full um, frame. framing? I don't crop. I don't. I don't okay. do. I don't do post. I don't do post crops. I don't. I don't shoot to crop. <laughs> I, okay. I only shoot for the frame. I only shoot right. for the 50 or the 35 mil frame or whatever I'm using within that prism, within that frame. If if I don't have that, then it's not really working for me. Um, okay. there's, there, but saying that, and, you know, there are going to be times when I'm doing a commercial job or I've got some other thing where there's a different kind of pressure, it's not a personal mm -hmm. project or whatever, then... I will look into doing things like that if I have to, um, yeah. in order to save, you know, um, you know, in order to, yeah, not get fired or whatever, you know, <laughs> just to save my, <laughs> save my yeah. bacon. Um, but yeah. no, I mean, you know, most of my photography is personal and most of my photography is genuinely a full frame image and mm -hmm. like, you know, on a roll of film, if you don't have it, you don't have it, you know, you can crop mm -hmm. it, I guess, but, um, you know, the only time I would really go into cropping is if I had a specific project in mind mm. where I wanted to kind of deconstruct my images and I wanted to focus on elements or fragments. Mm -hmm. Then, then mm -hmm. I would, and in fact, that's a project I am working on. But, but then I would kind of look at something. But that that's a creative approach mm. to it. It's not how I shoot photographs, and okay, and, and they're not. They become something else because they're not the photos I ever took. They're only elements of the image. So. You know, I'm taking some information out, but it's not what I saw when I took the photograph. Yeah. So, oh, but it's interesting. Perspective, yeah, I mean, yeah. again, it comes back to just you know, you know, trying to stay, uh, you know, like kind of interested and trying to keep, you know, trying to keep inventing and trying to try new things. You know, um, yeah, have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Back to the last Someone two pictures. Back to this one. Thank you, Jonathan. Statement of the yeah. night. We have to have fun. There you go, yes. <laughs> I really do agree. It really is. If you can't have fun, then you know what can you have? Really, you know. Exactly. You got to walk away with a smile, you know, and you got to really love what you, you know, love the photographs you take because mm. you know everyone's going to have a different vision, you know. And we all have a. I think we all have the ability to have our own. That's the great thing about photography. We all have our own singular unique vision and no one else can have that vision no one can Believe ever take it away from you and that's mm. the ultimate freedom of photography to have that vision mm. Mm. absolutely all right so last two pictures these oh, yeah. uh so I, I, I put these last because they're my favorite two actually of the of the set oh, so that, you love this one yeah yeah no well look this is again summer nights and it was just looking at the crowd and and just that fascination we have with mobile phones these days. And mm -hmm. I was like, God, everyone's just sticking, you know, a mobile phone up to, mm -hmm. you know, like you do, like you see all in these events. Um, and I just thought it was really fascinating. Of course, the blue smoke is what's coming out of yeah. the exhaust of one of the cars. So they actually yeah. have these colored smokes that come out. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yellow, orange. Um, the next frame is going to be green. So yeah. they they must put some sort of a, I don't know what they do, but they, they have some sort of colouring and it just creates this coloured smoke. Um, and, <laughs> um, and so, you know, they're all looking at the action, but for me the action is right beside me of them looking at the action. So, again, this is like, you know, what, what what's going to make the photograph? I mean, I'm like, 
I don't want to do another car burnout. I've done that. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, I look to my left and there's all these mobile phones sticking up. And I thought that's, that's really interesting. And so I, I just took a few frames and, um, and it's hard to see on the, on, on the, uh, you know, on your, um, mm, yeah, you know, but, but there's, there's actually an arm that sort of in the smoke, that's very light. And there's another one here. So when Warren and it, I were working on the image, yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah. There and there's, is. Another yeah. One, there's, another, yeah. there's another one up in the first guy somewhere in yeah around there there's another there's arm with there. another phone yeah. and when you uh, see yeah. the print or you, <laughs> let's say when you see the file it's like wow because you know it's just like talk about detail talk yeah. about capturing detail i mean it really is and you know and they're subtle moments but they really make mm. the photograph so if you want to mm. you know if you get to go into the Leica store in sydney or melbourne and you see these prints just have a really close look at the background because it's really for me you know it's just yeah it's really beautiful it's it's not just about what you're seeing you've got to look deeper it's, it's always good yeah. to look deeper anyway it's like a painting you want to you want to analyze things you want to go deeper into the photograph you want to see you know all the little nuances all the little mm -hmm. moments you know yeah yeah so that so then you you mentioned green smoke. So this is uh, I put this, yeah, in so, just, this, is, this. We'll finish yeah. on this one because yeah. I just think this is awesome. <laughs> it's, it's it's um so again this is this is a, another rev head shot and it's it's just that sort of moment um where they've just done a kind of a massive burnout um and again you know I'm I was focusing on the hand you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. going back to your wonderful compliment about my my ability to focus and 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 capture the you know focus the moving moment this is an example where i'm focusing the moving moment because i didn't the hand came up and then i focused so and, and the car's spinning oh. around and moving it's not an easy shot you know no no um, no and and no, these so look great. yeah so it was look at you know it came out well i was really happy with it um <laughs> Modesty, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I think it's a, a, a fabulous picture. And I, I don't think I'll get be able to get to Melbourne or soon to see these, but one, but at some point I will do. But I've seen them on my computer screen, and I know it's not quite the same um, as not I've always same. said. The print's all about print. It's all yeah. about print. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, beautiful stuff. So look, I'm gonna. But that's the last picture of, of the work that Stephen sent us to share with you. And also, these are the, all the images from the exhibition. So really, it's well, we are actually running a little bit past our time. So I'm going to ask if there are any questions for Stephen, because um, he's here and he's very happy to take some questions about uh, his work or about the camera or whatever. So please feel free to type those in the chat. It's going to turn yeah. that off so like we can the, see. Uh, I okay, like Ro Robert Robert Shakespeare's quote: "Hellraiser at Heaven's Gates." That's that is good. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, love it. Um, love it. Love it. No, it's some good stuff. So I'm just going to quickly flick back through and see if there's any that we've thanks, missed. Yeah. Oh, there's a few in the Ask a Question section yeah. here. Let me just go through those. Yeah, yeah, do thank that. You. I mean, it's All thank right. you. Anyway, thanks everyone for your you know wonderful comments and um, um, feedback. That's great. I, I can't okay. answer all of you, but I'm I'm looking at you all and I'm reading it. So thank you. So I'm just going to read these questions out. So the first one was about uh, are there difficulties in achieving micro focus with micro blur to do with the high resolution sensor? I think we answered that one. Um, yeah, next one is with, with the huge amount of tonal range, would monochrome files from the M11 be as good as the M10 monochrome? I've addressed that one as well. Yeah, I believe. Oh, wow. Um. I ask why Stephen chooses to shoot at small apertures when most of his shot in most of his shots when more open apertures would probably do. That's an interesting question. Mm. Are you going for depth of field, or particularly for a, a reason, or is there another reason? Um, well, I, I tend to yeah, again. I, I I'm not really see. I'm not that technical. I have to be honest. Mm. I'm not a technical kind of person, and I mm. I tend to go with the lighting conditions um and and kind of work out my apertures my speed of the camera is more important than the aperture um uh, yes so i'm yeah, you know yeah. if i want to create something at an eighth of a second or a quarter of a second i'll just have to work in whatever aperture fits that speed um you know i mean i'll, I'll I, I i shoot a lot 
you know, on lower speeds. And then, you know, if I'm at 125th or 250, um, again, it'll kind of, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll obviously I'll work the ISO of the camera as well, but, you know, I, t I tend to, yeah, I don't get really fixated. I mean, I will, if I'm shooting portraits, I'll tend to go down to about 2.8. I really love 2.8 when, mm -hmm, when, mm -hmm. when I'm doing people. Um, you know, I, 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 I have a, a kind of a, a pet love for that aperture or, or okay. even lower, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, okay. uh, so yeah, again, it's a, it's kind of a feeling. It just, I just kind of move with what I'm doing and, um, you know, yeah. I mean, it just okay. it's react to the situation really. It's I'm not sure I can quite answer that, you know. That's deep. okay. So there's another question here is, uh, have you an experience shooting with the mechanical or the electronic shutter, or do you just leave it on hybrid, which is the default setting in the menus? Yeah. Um, it's just on hybrid. Yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not a sort of, I'm not fussed about the shutter noise. Um, what, you know, okay. Are there any circumstances where you might require complete silence when you're shooting? Cause that you will get absolutely. that. with the shutter. And that, Oh, absolutely. And if I, if I was in that situation, um, you know, and I'm sort of, you know, <laughs> where you can't make a you know crawling in a trench in afghanistan or whatever and you you know you, you need to take yep. pictures and you can't make a noise that's going to come in real handy i can okay. tell you okay. um, no no <laughs> really i mean but yeah, the, yeah. generally i kind of like the sound of the, the 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 you know the prototype i mean the um what did you call it the uh the standard one the you know? mechanical shutter yeah, the, yeah, yeah I, I like yeah. i like that sound and mm -hmm. and so i'll 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 pretty much use that um yeah, until there's a time when I'm I'm going to have okay. to go silent, you know. Okay. Um, Interestingly enough, I find it quite disconcerting the the electronic shutter. I've been mean, appreciate its benefits, but when you press the shut when you press a, a shutter relief, nothing happens. It doesn't seem yeah. to happen. It, it's yeah. quite it's quite strange. Anyway, it's just me. Okay. In, this, more? See, for me, the the electronic shutter wouldn't work. I wouldn't. I don't like it. I don't like the way yeah. it sounds. But I mm. like the way this sounds because it, it reminds me of shooting film, you know? Yes, yes, fair enough. Um, thoughts or tips, Stephen, on using the M11 for landscape photography? I have an M11 and some Lux M35 millimeter and a new 21 and love the lightness and portability of my kit now. So do you wow. do landscapes at all? I do. I love okay. shooting landscapes, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm do I shoot, I'll shoot anything. <laughs> I just like a sort of, <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if depending on the story I'm trying to build, you know, I mean, um, but yeah, look, I think um, I think this is an amazing camera for shooting anything. I mean, especially landscapes as well because of the detail. Mm, uh, yeah, the, yeah. You know, the 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 amount of information that you're getting on this 60 megapixel, you know, file mm. is just going to give you so much range, um, and okay. uh, and and just the quality is it's yeah. I mean, you know. But I mean, you know, landscapes, portraits. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's all going to be great quality, you know. Yes, yes. I, I have noticed that the 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 landscape work. Just to continue with the question, the the, the actual edge sharpness of micro yeah. detail, particularly yeah. with the Apo lenses, is quite remarkable and noticeably so. Yeah. I and mean, it was already yeah. good, but I've noticed that in the M11, yeah. there is a, a crispness to it, which I've I've only seen in the monochrome cameras, to be honest. So yeah. yeah, there's something yeah. going on there. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. some secret sauce. <laughs> I have noticed that. That is, right. is amazing, and that will be really beneficial for doing landscapes. You know, absolutely. To get absolutely. that sort of edge to edge Christmas, you know, will be really great. And I, I, I would love to see, and I have yet to see it, but I would love to see something blown up to sort of two, three meters. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I would love to see what what it looks like. You know, I might have a go at that. I can do those I think, sorts of things. It, it would be really worth doing. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a go. Uh, last question, I think, from Paul. Have you converted any files to black and white? And how do you, and do you like the results? No, I have not. Um, okay. I've specifically shot color, and um, I'm a bit of a kind of a, I don't know. I, I, it's not that I wouldn't turn anything to black and white if if i had a project or if i needed to turn something to black and white i would um yeah. but I, I i really 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 focus on color with this particular camera yeah um i i feel that that's its 
that's its strength. Yeah, color. Fair enough. Um, okay. I think it's great to have the ability to, with any color digital camera, to go into black and white. But I haven't seen the results. I I, I would love to see it. I think it would be really great. I would love to see the comparison between yeah. the M11 turned into monochrome with the monochrome. Okay, um, well, I might try and do I that. I personally because... would love to see that. Um, okay, something because... I can do a video about, I think, might be worthwhile. It's a yeah. good idea. It's only because I because I would love a monochrome as well. <laughs> and, but, but, yeah. but 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 if if the M11 produces a file that will match the monochrome, well, then I wouldn't need sure. a monochrome, would I? It, it'll be close. It'll be close. I have yeah. done black and white conversions of the M11, yeah. and they look really good. So I've got I some prints just yeah. over okay. there. I can't right. really show yeah. you, but yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I'd be really interested to see that. That's a good question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, that's all the questions. Um, I think I'm going to call it an evening there. Thank you, Thank everybody, you. for uh, for listening. Thank you, Stephen, so much for sharing your images and your time and your deep wisdom with us. There's some there's some profound comments there about photography, which I really appreciate. I'm sure the people listening would feel the same way because um, it is there's more to it than lenses and cameras. There's yeah. a whole life thing going on there, isn't there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. So um, the we uh, I don't have any information about what, what the stock situation is of M11s at the moment. I know they've been incredibly popular, of course. Um, Ryan Williams, who's on the chat, would know more about that. But I do urge you to go into the stores and have a look at Stephen's images on the walls. And if you want to see what this camera is capable of, and obviously they're beautiful pictures that Stephen's shot as well, that, that the combination of the two. Is very, well, is very impressive indeed. So do drop by the stores and have a look at those. And as I did mention at the beginning, if uh, anybody had missed that, I am doing some sample prints off the M11, uh, which, and I'm hoping to do a couple of Stevens quite big as well, that will be available to be, to be looked at, you know, and closely with your glasses on and everything and show what the results are like. So thank Great. you everybody for watching. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'll <laughs> say good night for now and hopefully talk to you all again at another time. Yeah, so thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.